I wanted to uh, just share with you uh, my thoughts on what looks like is going to be coming uh, probably uh, at the end of the day today or sometime next week, although it could take several weeks because Bob Barr is in the middle of the process. Or excuse me, Bill Barr. I keep I keep thinking of you know my old congressman from from Atlanta, Bob Barr, who I met at Manny Maloof's ta tavern a couple of times, and he was a uh, you know a, a crazed Republican. In fact, he's still out there being a crazed Republican, but um, but he was also you know nice guy to have a beer with. Uh, but in any case, Bill Barr is the attorney general. He was the attorney general who in 1992 advised George Herbert Walker Bush to cover up the Iran-Contra crimes of Reagan and Bush and shut down the investigation by Special Prosecutor Lawrence Walsh at that time. And uh, the way he shut down those investigations was by pardoning Casper Weinberger and Ollie North and Elliot Abrams and a couple of other people whose names are kind of lost to the obscurity of time. And, uh, you know, I've been predicting, I, you know, I wrote an, uh, an op-ed, uh, geez, a month or two ago saying, you know, he did it before for the Republicans. Bill Barr is a guy who knows how to cover up crimes for Republicans. That's what he does for a living. I mean, you know, he went from that into private law practice, helping out people with their crimes. And, and, you know, now he's the attorney general again. And so Mueller works for him. And the State Department, or excuse me, the, De the Department of Justice guidelines that were developed under the administrations of two different presidents who were both facing the possibility of impeachment or indictment because they had both committed crimes. The Justice Department guidelines that were developed by those attorneys general in those two White Houses, those guidelines say you can't indict a sitting president. And Bob Mueller is the kind of guy, he was, you know, a Marine, and, you know, you, you, he, you, you tell him this is the way it is, and he says, sir, yes, sir. You tell him take that hill, and he takes that hill. You tell him you can't climb that hill, he doesn't climb that hill. I mean, it's just that simple. And so Mueller has said that he's going to operate within the guidelines of the Justice Department, as has Bill Barr. But Bill Barr took it a step beyond that. Now, if the, so if the Justice Department guidelines say you can't indict a sitting president, and Mueller found crimes by Trump that are worthy of indictment, he nonetheless will not indict because that's what the Justice Department guidelines say from two previous presidents who had committed crimes. So if he doesn't indict, this is where it gets real interesting. What Barr has said, what Bill Barr has said, our Attorney General, is that if there's no indictment, if somebody's not criminally charged, and he said this in general, right? So. When he said it, I think a lot of people thought, oh, he's talking about people like George Papadopoulos, not even, not even literally George, because he got busted, but, you know, maybe Hope Hicks, you know, somebody, somebody who got involved in this thing, got caught up in it, maybe is on the edge of getting in trouble, but we decided that what they did isn't all that bad, so we're not going to indict them. And so what Bill Barr said is, if somebody isn't indicted, I'm not going to release the information on that person. It wouldn't be right. Right, if Hope Hicks made some bad decisions, but they weren't actually crimes, you know, why smear her name in public by talking about the part of the Mueller report that refers to Hope Hicks? And I think everybody, you know, is going, yeah, well, that makes a certain amount of sense. You know, if she's not being, you know, if, if you can't prove that she committed a crime, then, you know, why should you go out and talk about what she did? Which is fine logic for everybody except Trump. But Bill Barr has said he intends to apply that logic to Trump. He said it in his confirmation hearings. So if Donald Trump is not indicted, which he won't be, even if there's proof that he colluded with Russia, if he's not indicted, then the information about Donald Trump will not be transmitted to Congress or the American people by the Attorney General. It will be, it will be redacted. It'll be deep-sixed. I think we can predict that right now, which means that Rudy Giuliani and Donald Trump are going to be all over the media next week and all the way to 2018 saying, see, no indictment, no information, nothing to see here. This was a witch hunt. There's nothing going on. 
because Bill Barr will have used this kind of, I wouldn't call it a technicality in the law, but I, you know, I think a, you know, a terrible failure of two previous presidential administrations, both of which had guys in the White House who could have been indicted for crimes, where the attorney general ordered the lawyers in the, in the uh, DOJ to come up with guidelines for the DOJ about whether they could prosecute a sitting president. In both cases, they said, we don't think it's a good idea. Not, in neither case did they say it's impossible or illegal or unconstitutional. They just said it's not a good idea because the president is so busy being president that he shouldn't be distracted by a criminal trial, wait until he's af wait until after he's out of office. And then we get into all these issues about statutes of limitation. You know, most crimes have statutes of limitations associated with them. Murder is one of the few that doesn't. But most crimes do. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of speculation that some of Trump's crimes, certainly, particularly his financial crimes, which typically have a 10-year statute of limitations, that those crimes will have run out at the end of this presidential term and certainly would run out if he's in office until 2024. 